Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus, the Tribble. Uh, about four years ago, I made a video called No More Wi-Fi, How to Wire Your House for Internet. Uh, this was four years ago. Currently, it's at 1.6 million views. People are still watching this video like mad. So clearly, uh, most people uh, are kind of thinking about ditching the Wi-Fi, going to a wired Ethernet connection. If you want to know how to do that, uh, watch that video. Uh, there's also three other videos that I made in the same playlist, and they're all about, like, you know, Mocha and, you know, networking over power line adapters and coax and tells you how to do everything, basically. But the question that keeps coming up again and again, and I mentioned this in the first video, is once you got your hardwired setup done and you want to turn your Wi-Fi off, uh, sometimes there's a button on your ISP's modem slash router, which I shall henceforth refer to as the box, because here in France they call it le box. So, right, the modem router, the box that your ISP gives you. Sometimes it's got a button on it, it says Wi-Fi. You press the Wi-Fi button, the Wi-Fi turns off. Very often these days, buttons are kind of like, uh, they're not a la mode, they're not, uh, right, we don't want buttons on anything, we want to connect with our smartphone app wirelessly to the to the box which doesn't even have a display on it anymore it doesn't have a it doesn't have buttons it doesn't have a display it just has it just like glows and like pulsates you know it's all futuristic no more buttons right so how do you turn the wi-fi off in your box if there are no buttons well the reason i haven't made this video until now is because um, as I previously mentioned it depends on the particular box that your isp has given you each one is different but because people kept asking me this question over and over again, I decided to make this short vid to show you guys how I actually connect to the web interface of my box to disable the Wi-Fi. Uh, your situation is not going to be exactly the same. You have a different provider, different manufacturers, different firmware in the box. The, for, the box has its own, its own software, you know. But at least this is going to give you a general idea. It's going to show you how to find the IP address of your box, how to connect to it via a web browser, and most likely there will be a setting in software that you access via this web interface that will allow you to turn your Wi-Fi off. So, let's take a peek. So the first thing we need to know is how to actually connect to the web interface of your particular box. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click the start button, type command, run command prompt, and then all we're going to do is type the command ipconfig and press enter. Okay, now you see you got all these things here, a wireless adapter, wireless LAN, blah, blah, blah. The one we're actually interested in is Ethernet adapter for Ethernet. Uh, now, one thing I have to mention is, before you do any of this, you should connect your pewter with an Ethernet cable directly to your box, or to a switch, and then to the box. Make sure you're not doing this via Wi-Fi, because you're going to turn the Wi-Fi off. So, got to be wired first. So... What we're looking for is the default gateway here, and you see there's this IP address 192.168.24.1. That number right there, that's going to be the IP address of your box. That's the, the, the literal web address that you're going to go to in your browser to connect to the web interface of your box. So, uh, write that down, memorize it, whatever. Then you run your little web browser here. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's, it must be updating or something, because that's much slower than usual. Okay, so now, here we're going to do 192.168.4.1, and press enter. And if it's not secure, that's okay. Now, you're probably wondering, those of you with the eagle eyes, you're going, Scotty, you just said your default gateway is 192.168.24.1, and you went to 192.168.4.1. That's because I have a second router. I'm not just connected with my computer, two switches, and then to the ISP's box. I actually have a router in between that acts as a firewall and does all kinds of other cool stuff. So when I look at the default gateway, uh, I see 24.1. That's actually the IP address of my router, but I already know that the IP address of my box is 192.168.4.1. So, right, quick little note there. Also, um, you can probably connect with HTTP, not HTTPS. If you do connect with HTTPS, because HTTP doesn't work, 
HTTPS, of course, being the encrypted connection, uh, it may give you a browser warning, like, oh my God, this website's certificate is not valid, blah, blah. You know, you have to click the advanced button and say, yes, add an exception or allow this one time only or whatever. Go ahead and do that. What you're actually doing is your computer is connecting to essentially a web server, like just like you visit Google, except the, the web server, the web page is loaded from your actual ISP's box uh, in your house. So uh, there's no security risk here. There's no, it's, it's a local connection. It, when, when you're doing this, you're not actually going out onto the internet. You're connecting essentially to a server and that server happens to be in the physical box that's sitting in your house, like, you know, right across the room from you. So don't worry about security warnings. Just accept and say, yes, allow it. Okay, so now here we are at the Livebox Pro configuration. My service provider is Orange, Orange, uh, here in France. Now, um, okay, you're going to need the password. So you can see here I'm at 192.168.4.1. I've got a login page. This is the login page for the web config. Um, right. What the heck is the password? <laughs> well, usually the login and password are, it's either admin and admin or admin and blank password. Uh, or in many cases, you have to look on the underside of your modem. There'll be like a sticker, look, fl flip your box up and look. And sometimes there's a sticker that has a password on it. Sometimes the password is the same as your Wi-Fi password. That's also printed on the sticker on the bottom of your unit. Um, in my case, I actually have to go and look at the manual and it gives me the password, the def default password, which is just some random string of letters and numbers. I've actually uh, logged into this previously configured things and actually changed the password. So um, you may have to dig a little to find the password. Uh, you may even have to contact your, your internet service provider to find out like, you know, if you can't find the password, but chances are somewhere they gave you the password. So once you have the password, uh, I'm not typing. Right. Okay. Type the password in. All right. And now this is the web configuration interface of my box. And you'll notice over here, it says Wi-Fi activated. So all I'm going to do to turn the Wi-Fi off is click here. And it's, it's a little bit pokey to load pages, but you'll notice here it has global Wi-Fi settings and Wi-Fi settings. Um, it, it lists two Wi-Fi things, Livebox 7 BB0 and then BB0 Wi-Fi invite. This is actually the bottom one, the, the invite. That's for like, the guest Wi-Fi network. So I'm just going to click that and turn it off. And I wait a few seconds. And na, 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 Okay. Lightning fast. Right. Now again, okay, and then the guest Wi-Fi is off. Now this is for the my local Wi-Fi for, for me to use in the house with the password and all that stuff. I'm going to turn that off and then wait like 10 minutes for it to stop spinning. Oh, that was better. Um, and of course, I could just come up here, right, then it jumps and says, no, no, I'm back on. Right, uh, yeah, this is this is uh, Orange's live box. So instead, I'm just going to click up here for the, the global settings and just say off. And then it jumps back. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's off. Are we sure? Okay, let's see. Yeah, their, their firmware is, is pretty fun. But when I go back to the previous page, uh, it says Wi-Fi deactivated. And I think it actually worked. But what I do is I go and I look at the actual physical box. And then now you can see the Wi-Fi light is no longer on. So, okay, my Wi-Fi is deactivated. So obviously you have a different box most likely, so it's going to look different than this. Um, but you'll see down here at the bottom of the screen, you have like other things to click. So you have like internet available, TV available, phone available, Wi-Fi deactivated, guest Wi-Fi deactivated, scheduler deactivated, blah, 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 history of connections. There's all kinds of cool stuff that this does. Like for example, um, uh, my phone is connected to this. So if I click on the phone listing here, like I can log into here and it, it shows like all the phone numbers that have like called me recently which is super, super handy. Um, there's all kinds of nifty stuff you can do if in the, the Wi-Fi section, uh, you can go in here and if the Wi-Fi is activated, I can actually turn on the Wi-Fi scheduler and this is pretty nifty. Maybe I need to click that. There we go, you have to click it. So this says activate Wi-Fi scheduler. So I can even set this up so that Wi-Fi is like deactivated uh, at a certain time, like for example, while I'm sleeping or it's only activated certain hours during the day. 
Um, it's kind of a nifty feature. Uh, not all boxes will have this, but the point is like, in addition to turning off Wi-Fi, you should definitely like come in here and, and check this stuff out because there's all kinds of, of usually like nifty and handy things uh, that you could do in here. Now it's saying that my Wi-Fi is activated again, so I'll go back and turn it off. Okay. Their software is a bit goofy. Uh, another thing you can do is you can go into the gear here and you can look at like network settings. There's all kinds of cool stuff. You can play with like VPN settings, firewall, uh, change language, uh, fancy routing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you click on network here, you have network address translation, DNS, universal plug and play, dynamic DNS, demilitarized zone, blah, blah, blah. Everything you can do with like a, a store-bought router, you can generally do with your ISP's box if they give you these options. So check that out because there's a lot of nifty stuff. You can also come over here in the help section and there's an, a firmware update button and there's also a, a diagnostic that you can do. So you can click diagnosis if you're having problems. Uh, it'll say like, diagnose all services, internet, telephone service, or Wi-Fi. This is actually handy to know because if you ever have a problem with your internet, if you know how to log into your box, you can actually come in here and do these diagnostics first. And very often when you run these tests, what happens is like the results of it are automatically sent up to your ISP. So then when you call them, like make a service call, they're going to see that like, oh, you already ran these tests. Okay. I know what the problem is. We'll send somebody out to fix it for you. So there's a lot of like really, really nifty stuff in here. And of course, when you're done, you just disconnect. So there you have it. And again, by finding that default gateway address, going to it in your web browser, finding the password and logging in, you have a whole bunch of options at your fingertips, including most likely uh, turning the Wi-Fi on or off. If you can't turn the Wi-Fi off, you can dig into the settings and possibly find a transmit power and turn that down to low so that instead of like blasting through your whole house, it's it'll just cover maybe a single room or maybe two. Um, it's better than nothing. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.